Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Welcome back for a special video this week on Tesla's newest feature, Charge On Solar. Now our power walls have been getting a workout here. Just last night, they were part of a three hour virtual power plant event that went from six to 9 p.m. where they discharged from full to empty and earned us 70 bucks. This morning they're empty, but they're charging up. And once they're full, we're gonna try out this new Charge On Solar feature. I'm gonna go over some of the basics, what to expect, what the system does and its behaviors, and anything else that I think is interesting. Keep on watching. Let's go over some of the basics. What is Charge On Solar? Aren't I already doing it? And why would I wanna do it? Basically, Charge On Solar takes your excess electricity generated from your panels, and instead of sending it to the grid or your power walls first, it sends it to your Tesla vehicle first. Now, it will still send them to the power wall and the grid, but basically it preferentially fills your vehicle with that clean solar, and then once that's topped off, we'll send it back to the grid or to your power walls. Now, why would you want to use this feature? There are a couple different reasons, and I'll go over a couple of them. The first reason would be that you live in a state where maybe you don't have net metering or your net metering isn't advantageous. You know, that is your excess electricity that you're generating, you're just not getting paid much for. In this situation, it's just better to use it behind the meter and so you're not wasting it by keeping it in your vehicle and using it that way. That's definitely one big one. Second one might be you're like me and I just want to run everything as cleanly and as fit, you know, efficiently as possible. And for me, that's by using solar. So I'm also trying to just keep it you know, off the grid, make as little bit of an impact as possible as I can. Three, it's more efficient. So you, know, you may not be home during the day and you're charging your car at nighttime. So when you're doing that, if you're not using the grid and you're using your batteries, you're actually having some efficiency loss from the electricity going from the panels to the batteries to the car, you know, and then to your car's battery. So you avoid some of those efficiency losses by just charging on solar during the day. And the last one is reducing fees. And this is kind of my big one. I hate those non-bypassable charges that four or five cents or so for every kilowatt hour that um, you would basically accrue if you were charging at nighttime. Now, since we charge during the day and can top it off with the solar, again, you're keeping it behind the meter, avoiding those charges and sending as little money as possible to anybody else. Those are the reasons I think charge on solar is gonna be useful. So let's go ahead and see how do we set it up. Tesla requires three different software updates for Charge On Solar to work. The Powerwall gateway needs to be on 23.12.10, which seems to be the lagging update, as this is the one we got two days ago and is the one that activated the Charge On Solar feature. Our phone's updated to 4.22.5, which is the required update uh, about a week or so ago, and we also have our car on 2023.26. Uh, ours is on point one specifically, but anything newer than point 26 will activate the feature. Once you have all three of those, you should see a banner in your app that looks like that. Once you see that, you can click through here and it's gonna give you a brief description of what Charge On Solar is. You can click continue to go past that screen. Once you've gone there, you're now gonna be at the charging slider bars and this is where it might be a little bit confusing because this is different than what you're used to. Now your lowest sliding bar is gonna be your charge to no matter what level. So this is basically down to 40% all the way up to 100%. Wherever you set this lower sliding bar, it's going to use whatever source electricity is available at full power and it will charge to that level. So if you set it to 50%, it'll go to 50, 70, etc. It'll go to that level. And then this is where that other top sliding bar comes in. Once that top sliding bar is extended out to 90, let's say, it will then use from the either 50 to 90 or 70 to 90 with only excess uh, solar electricity. That first lower bar is going to use the grid or whatever else is available. This uh, top sliding bar is only going to use excess solar electricity. So keep in mind when you're using charge on solar, depending on the size of your solar input, you may or may not be getting full, you know, 32, 48 amps, et cetera, from your EVSC. Just something to keep in mind. Now, 
after I did this and set these to where I liked them and I kept them where they were just for right now, um, it asked me to pair my uh, wife's phone to the power wall. I think it just wasn't paired before and that's why I had to do it. But while I was doing this, I kind of looked at the troubleshooting thing and it does note that the power wall and the vehicle both need to be on Wi-Fi together. So that's something to, to keep, in, keep in your head here. Um, if your power walls aren't in the garage with your vehicle, just make sure they're both in range. Um, basically, once you've done that, you'll get a, you know, a screen for that, and then it will ask for your home location. This is just to make sure that it's only using this feature, you know, location-based for your own system. Um, ours populated our address automatically. I blurred it out, but you can move the pin if you need to and change it. Um, and basically, once you've done this, you're going to hit continue to continue the setup, but that is finished. You are going to be using Charge On Solar after that. Now your energy side of the app is going to look a little bit different here. When Charge On Solar is active, the house zooms out as you can see here, and you finally get to see a little bit more of it, and your vehicle's in the garage. I believe previously this is only for Tesla electric com uh, customers. Um, now you can click on any of these destinations here, whether it's your car, the house, grid, et cetera, and it will take you to those specific graphs. Um, but you also need to keep in mind that this zoomed out view of the car that's really cool, it's only active when the car is actively charging. Once the car stops charging, if there's not enough excess uh, solar, or if you unplug it, et cetera, it just goes back to the old screen. A little bit of, I don't know, I, I figured they would just, you know, maybe have the garage door close and have a little slicker animation. It just didn't feel right to change it back to that old one, but maybe that's to encourage you to use charge on solar more. Now that we've gone over some of the basics, what should you expect when you're using Charge On Solar? Now, if your car's not already plugged in, go ahead and plug it in, pull up the app here and hit Start Charging. The first time we hit Start Charging using Charge On Solar, it gave us about a five or 10 second delay where it connected to the power wall. Um, now, once the power wall is connected to the vehicle, you'll get a message either waiting for sufficient solar if there's not enough um, excess solar, Otherwise, I messed around with the app and uh, I set the reserve to 100% and it was smart enough to say, hey, we're prioritizing the power wall here, so that's why you're not charging on solar. Um, but anyways, if you are charging on solar, it'll change that message to charge on solar and you'll see there's a little sun emoji there um, showing that it's active. Now, looking at the app here, you're probably gonna notice that these power adjustments may be off sometimes. Tesla themselves says it's not instant. They're basically looking at these every 10 seconds and making adjustments based on the power consumption. So you may see little periods where you're either sending more back to the grid or you're sending more back to the battery um, where you didn't think you would be. This is completely normal behavior. Now, Tesla notes themselves in their uh, you know, beginning thing when you're setting it up that it will only work if it has 1.2 kilowatts of excess solar. And this kind of ties into something else here. The lowest setting that you can use on your EVSEs is five amps. If that's on 120 volts with the standard plug, it's five to 12 amps. You know, if that's a 240, that's gonna go five all the way up to 80 potentially if you have an older Model S. Um, but basically, I tried this out and it works on both 120 volt, which is basically just going to be 12 amps the whole entire time. Generally, you know, when I'm using it for the excess solar, we're going to have more than a kilowatt or so of excess. Um, so it's not really going to make any adjustments on 120, but it still can. Um, when you're using the 240 volt EVSC, that's the one where I'm going to start to see more adjustments of the charging amperage. Um, and just keep in mind though that it's going to be that 1.2 kilowatt minimum, five amps at 240 volts. I'm assuming that also stays with the 120 volts, so that would be five amps at 120 volts or 600 watts or 0.6 kilowatt. Um, now what you'll also see here on the car is that it's pretty straightforward in telling you exactly what you need to know. In that upper left hand corner, depending on what's going on, it's either going to tell you either waiting on solar or if it's actively charging, it'll say, you know, charging on solar. And then the screen that it shows in the charging menu is basically going to mimic that uh, app too. So you're going to have those dual sliding bars. You can manually adjust the amperage, your old supercharging data, etc. Nothing has really changed here. but. 
basically this is all you need to do and what to expect from charge on solar this this is the beauty of this system you know in the past this is uh, you know something that you could either do manually sitting there adjusting amperage down on the charging which frankly is really really annoying really time consuming um, otherwise there were third-party solutions but I don't really want to open up my house's electricity to a third party I don't know that they really can control it but I just didn't feel comfortable with it so I think this is a huge upgrade here is basically Tesla is taking this and adding some huge functionality that you know is now native and uh, makes the system much much better We'll obviously learn some more of its behaviors as time goes on, but I had some questions on how it kind of behaved. One of those questions that I had was, what happens when you're using charge on solar and your house load exceeds the solar input? So I went ahead and turned on the AC and I turned on the dryer while the car was charging using excess solar. Now what the system does is that it looks at that when it makes it its adjustment, it ramped it down to one kilowatt, which is pet peeve of mine, you know, 12 amps at 120, anyways, uh, down to one, and it kept it there for a minute. Now I actually timed that out with my phone there. It was a minute and five seconds I saw from it going to one kilowatt and then just completely turning off charging. So I'd assume that, you know, in both directions, both turning on charging, you have to have at least 1.2 kilowatt of excess electricity for it to start charging. And in the same way, once it doesn't have that excess electricity for a minute, it's just gonna turn charging off. Now, the other interesting behavior that I noticed this morning from the system was that I had plugged it in last night and let it charge, you know, using the charge on solar feature. It didn't fully fill up the battery because it was low enough, so we had quite a ways to go. Now, this morning, I expected the power walls to fill them up first because basically we're on self-powered mode, so they drained all night and need to be refilled so we can stay off the grid completely. But what I noticed was that Charge On Solar actually prioritizes that car no matter what. Um, basically what you're going to have to do here is change a couple things and there are a couple ways to go about doing this. First one is you can switch to time-based control. If you switch to time-based control, if you have peak pricing, usually the uh, power walls are going to prioritize filling themselves up with that cheap electricity that can then arbitrage later during, you know, uh, expensive times. Um, so it's not going to preferentially choose the vehicle in time-based control versus in self-powered mode where it would. The other thing that you can do is you can change that slider bar, the top slider bar, and just move that all the way down. Basically, if you move that to where that lower sliding bar is, it's not going to use that excess uh, electricity from the solar as much, and it'll prioritize charging the power walls. Now, these aren't ideal. I kind of hope that something changes in the future which, with this. Um, I feel that it might be more useful, especially for me in self-power, to maybe have like a toggle or a slider bar that either blends the amount of electricity that's going to each source or it, you know, preferentially fills up the power walls to 80% and then starts doing the charge on solar. But um, we'll just see what kind of happens with the system in the future. But it's something that, you know, I kind of prefer my power walls filled first. I'd prefer to not have to manually do that because the whole purpose of this is to have it be automatic, but we'll see how the behavior kind of changes in the future. Um, the only other thing that I have to say is I would tell you what it would look like to have two cars in the garage in the app here, um, but our second car is on the FSD beta branch, so that one's probably, I'm guessing, three, four months until this you know gets the update. I really hope it doesn't take that long. It's super useful. I've been waiting on it forever, but I have a feeling that one will be a while. But that's it. If you have any questions or any comments about Charge on Soul or anything I can try and answer for you with my system here, please let me know and uh, see you at the next video. Thanks.